The following is a sponsored program paid for by Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group, Remax Results. Welcome to Rochester Real Estate, featuring Robin Gwaltney from Gwaltney Group, Remax Results, and Andy Brownell. Here's Andy Brownell on Rochester's News Talk, 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Good morning. Welcome to Saturday. Welcome to winter, everyone. Andy Brownell with Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group, Remax Results. Good morning, Robin. Good morning. I was just going to say, I think for the last two months, I've started by saying, well, since we don't have (laughs) winter yet, since we don't have winter yet, but yeah, here we are, middle of January, and we officially have winter. The other shoe dropped. It dropped, and it's cold. So Uh. there are There are a few things that are um, weather related that I would actually like to talk about, especially because some homeowners, this is their first winter in Minnesota, at least. You know, I mean, some have owned homes elsewhere and have just moved to Minnesota this year. So it's their first Minnesota winter. Other homeowners have lived in Minnesota, but this is their first time owning a home in the winter and having to worry about things that only homeowners have to worry about. Or any property owner, right? Yeah, so let's, so let's, talk. well, I mean, if you're in an apartment, you're probably not going to worry as much about your pipes freezing as you are if you're in a, I mean, even if you're in a condo, right? You're probably not going to worry about it as much as you are if you're in a, right. in a single family home. But okay, let's start with um, rural living. Make sure if you are using propane that you're keeping an eye on that. A lot of the people now have um, keep full service with their propane dealer but i will remember i will never forget the first winter that scott and i lived in a house with propane all of a sudden our house was getting cold and i called my dad and i said oh my god dad i think our brand new furnace quit working and he said why do you say that i said it's cold in our house so he said i'll be right there so he came out And, of course, the first thing he did was park his car, walk back to our propane tank and look in the propane because he was a very seasoned homeowner and had lived rural. He came in, he goes, you got to keep propane in the tank if you want to keep heat on in the house. I'm like, okay, gee, sorry, didn't realize I had to I had to watch that, you know, so. (laughs) That was my responsibility to call the guy. And luckily for me, it wasn't a weekend. It was a weekday, and they were able to come right over. So oh, great. we avoided a disaster. But if you do have to call for them to come and fill your propane tank, and it's in the nighttime or on the weekend, you're going to pay a premium price for that. Oh, yes, you are. <coughs> Any service call. <coughs> Excuse me. But the good news is, is like I said, now I'm on a keep full program. Because we have three different houses in Reed's Landing that all have propane. And if I had to worry about that, that'd be another big thing to worry about. So instead, our lovely guy from Files Oil just keeps it full and, and we're in good shape. So so do, do they come out weekly or monthly? I don't think weekly, but I don't even know if they're able to, like the gas meters, if they're able to read it from somewhere else. I really don't know what their technology is or if they're just in the area and they stop and check because I'm typically gone when they come by to check or fill. So I don't know, but we haven't run out. So that's a good thing. Yeah, that is is definitely a good thing. But, you know, this year it's going to be a little bit scary for folks because we haven't had any snow. So our ground hasn't been insulated. So these really cold temps that we're in for are going to cause some, some, quick freezing, right? True. And it can cause some serious problems with pipes. So one of the houses that we own is the one that I was raised in, right? And we have a renter in that house now, but he happens to be out of the country. So I just made sure that Scott went down there, turned the heat up a little bit, opened the doors below the sink, so that the warm air can get in there. You know, there's just things that you know about and learn about, but we have to be careful. A lot of times if people leave to go away, they just turn their water off so they right. don't have to worry about those pipes freezing. I'm not sure he would know how to turn it back on. And because we'll be gone when he returns, I think it's probably not a good idea to go that route. And actually, I've known somebody who did, you know, did that on a regular basis in a previous home and then moved into a different home, larger but older home. Mm-hmm. And nobody apparently had ever run the valve before. Oh. It broke off. Oh, no. 
So it ended up being a very expensive proposition. But it get, did get taken care of. But they had to get a yeah. plumber out there and yeah, oh you know, boy. go to the main line and yeah, yikes. Yeah, yeah. So there's yikes. a lot to know, and so those are things that you know you do want to be aware of. And sometimes people say, "Oh, I'm gonna try to save on the heat bill and and turn the heat way down." Well, you could have a uh, you could create a problem by doing that because a much more expensive problem. A much more expensive problem than just paying a little more heat. So, just be aware of all those things during this cold snap. Yeah, and you're you're right about the lack of insulation. And yeah. Maybe that's a blessing. This blast of snow, right? It's deep enough, right? Gives before us a little the ground cover, right? Mm-hmm. As we spend more than a few days in sub-zero cold. I and. I know you can check if you are home, you can check the water temperature in your faucet. Right. But, you know, don't be yeah. so happy if it's because at even 35 or 36 degrees at the faucet, you could still have a freeze. Yes, you could. So, yeah, if your water's still coming out nice and hot, you're in good shape. Yep. I, I don't know. I don't know if this was a thing. I don't know if you remember this, but when I was a kid, my dad would leave the water running just yep. a little. Yeah. I would be like, why are you doing that? Why are you leaving the water? Not a lot, you know, but it was just a little bit of water. Yeah, a little stream. Yeah, just a little stream of water to keep it from freezing. But I don't know if that's a thing anymore. It I'm, is. Is it still a thing? Yeah. Uh, I know RPU, uh, when you have a real cold snap, they'll often tell people if you live in a home that's prone, prone to freezing to pipes, freezing. turn it on to a pencil thick stream, okay. a pencil lead thick stream, just a little sure. stream, keep that water moving. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, makes sense. So lots to think about. I mean, it's it's a challenge to become a new homeowner no matter where you live. But when you live in a climate where the weather changes drastically, it does add, you know, a whole nother layer of things to learn about for sure. Well, another one you hadn't mentioned yet is if we get the howling, you know, winds with this new snow, uh, you could have one side of your roof completely bare and the other side have a six foot drift across it that's true which is not a good idea to leave up there not a good idea so hopefully you have a roof rake and you can get some of that snow down because otherwise you're going to have ice dams and then you're going to have a leaking roof and i'm not trying to be debbie downer but these are all realistic things that can happen that people need to be aware of for sure yeah have that bag of salt in the garage ready to sprinkle (laughs) yeah Yay. Well, you know what? I think we're only, what, 65, 66 days from the first day of spring. So we'll get through it. I'll cheer you up even more. I think we're 35 days away from pitchers reporting for spring training. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> I like it. So it's around the corner. We, we're we tough. We're Minnesotans. We'll get through it. No doubt about it. But we do have to be aware. And clearly, you know, we can talk about um, the houses, but it's not just the houses, right? It's everywhere, like you said, about the salt, the sidewalks, and people falling down and breaking hips. And it doesn't always seem like the most fun thing to do to get out and shovel your sidewalks, but it's so important. So you got to do it. Obviously, if the wind's whipping 100 miles an hour, it's not going to do you much good. But once it settles down, got to keep them clear. Got to keep them safe for those folks that do have to walk along those sidewalks. And the one thing that is assured in Minnesota, the weather will change. It will change. We'll go through this cold snap, and next thing you know, it'll be 40. You got it. Because we get get through this next week with this Arctic air coming at us. We're all, you know, we're headed right at the end of January at that point. Exactly. So a week or so left in the month of January, and then you're in February. Which is true. Anything can happen in February. Exactly. We'll get through it. In the meantime, <laughs> I'm going to stay busy selling houses because my phone has been ringing off the hook. All right. Well, we could talk more about real estate instead of, well, I guess, this has been real estate. As you always mentioned, it's important to maintain that asset. Well, and I like, I, do like to educate, I do like to educate homeowners and remind them of important things. So, I mean, I think that is super important. And also, I thought of another one before we take the break quick. Okay. Change the filter in the furnace. Change the filter in the furnace and make sure your batteries are good in your thermostat. Yes, because if you have that plugged up furnace, it's going to run a lot harder than it needs to run when it's really, really cold. And you could crack a heat exchange and that's going to cost you a couple grand. You got it. 
Good okay. advice. We'll take our break. Come back in just a moment with Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group, Remax Results. On News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. We'll be right back with Robin Gwaltney and Andy Brownell on Rochester Real Estate. This is News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Welcome back to Rochester. Robin Gwaltney from Gwaltney Group, Remax Results, and Andy Brownell on Rochester's News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Welcome back and good morning. We're with Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group, Remax Results. And uh, during the break, Robin, you mentioned you have, uh, I guess, some numbers, right? Real estate <laughs> updates, statistics, or whatever you want to call it. Well, I, I just, you know, we've been talking about this, and it's not really changing a lot. Everything is headed in the right direction. You know, interest rates are predicted to come, continue to keep coming down, and as they come down, more and more buyers are jumping into the buying, you know, into the pool of buyers. So that pool gets bigger. Um, we do have more sellers that are feeling confident about putting their houses on the market. So albeit our inventory is still not where we want it, you know, we do have a few more homes to sell, which is great. And honestly, our spring market is going to be full steam ahead by February 1st, I swear to you, because we are supposed to be in our slowest time and my phone has been ringing off the hook. Wow. It is, it's been busy and I've got some, you know, I've been getting calls for we're going to be selling our house in March. We're going to be selling our house in June. I want to sell my house in February. What do we got to do to get the house on the market? Let's get it on as soon as possible. So I've got a bunch of listings coming up in the immediate um, future and projected down the road, which is nice. great. That's yeah, it's a really good indicator. Like it makes me, you know, each year, this is year 24 for me now in real estate. So each year I can compare it to previous years. And it's like, this is busy for January. I'm just going to tell you. So it's definitely a good sign. You know, in the past, I know it's changed somewhat. Um, It used to be everybody wanted to line up to be ready for after match day, considering we're this big medicine town. Right. Um, is it advantageous to be on the market before match day to have the house already out there and listed? Well, I'll tell you, the residents that are coming in are hoping that you wait for them so that they have things to choose from. Because if you put your house on the market prior to match day, somebody else is going to buy it, not one of the incoming residents, most likely. Because we've got buyers that are just waiting for inventory. Ah, once so, again, yeah. But, I mean, as a seller, you should sell it when it's going to be the most optimal for you. So if there's anybody that, if we want to start our new job um, in California in June, and we really would like to have the kids finish the school year, what's the best time for us to put our house on the market? I'm certainly not going to come in and tell you, well, the residents match in March, so you're going to want your house on the market because I'm not going to create that stress of you now having to figure out where you're going to live. And, and, and truth be told, the residents typically will buy the house and don't want to move here until they start, which is in June. So oh. sometimes there's a timing thing. So it's just that it's good to have somebody that has the knowledge of like what those start dates are, how many people we anticipate coming, what price range those buyers are coming, you know, going to be looking at because that number changes every year as well. So there is, there's a lot to it, a lot of moving parts, but each case is individual as far as when the best time is going to be to put the house on the market. But there's a lot of things we would talk about. So never hesitate to call me and just ask those questions. And I imagine with the low inventory that we continue to experience, the importance or the, I don't know, the focus on the the residents coming in is it's probably diminished in, in importance. Correct. Because you already have that buyer demand built in. Right. Because when when that started, it was like that was a huge bump in activity. You know, like we were pretty status quo and business was pretty level throughout the months. And then residence season came and it was like a substantial bump in activity. And now it's like interest rates are definitely creating the bumps in activity. Ah, okay. 
So not that we won't see an influx of residents, because of course we will. And we will all look forward to it and we will all be busy because of it. But also that influx is matched by an outflow of residents, too. They're leaving. Well, they're not. Yeah, right. Many of them are. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, some some move up to fellowship, some some go elsewhere for fellowship, some, you know, have gone through fellowship already that are selling their house and now they're going to stay and buy a bigger house for because they've taken a position on the staff. So, yeah, it's a the Mayo Clinic is a really good thing for we realtors. I imagine when you go to the national conferences that you attend that it's a relatively unique situation. There's only a handful is. of places in the country that have similar situations. I don't even know if they're, yeah, there are a few. But, but they're bigger cities too. They're bigger cities. But to have like seriously our main business, right? I mean, it's like yeah. Mayo Clinic, the medical center and Olmstead and, and the other medical things that we have. But I mean, we're a medical city. I mean, they don't call us the med city for nothing. Right. So like we, I always like to say, you can't throw a stick without hitting a doctor. Yeah, exactly. I always used to love it when I was at a kid's sporting event because I always thought, well, if anybody gets hurt, he's a doctor, she's a doctor, he's a doctor, she's yep. a doctor, he's a nurse, she's a nurse. Yeah, I always felt pretty pretty safe with my True kids. story. My son dislocated his shoulder playing baseball yeah. for Mayo High School. Three physicians in the audience. Yeah, yeah always. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we have to love that, right? Yeah, I was actually um, showing a house last weekend to a friend and um, client, longtime client of mine, and she happens to be an eye doctor, and I happened to show up with bloodshot eyes. And I think I, oh, I'm so sad to say this, but I think I might have an allergy to my dad's cat. Nothing terribly dangerous, but I think it does make my eyes red and itchy. And so the first thing she did was come close to my face and look at my eyes. What's going on with your eyes? <laughs> you know, it's like I love it. I just love it. Send me a bill. No. Yeah, she, it's just, <laughs> no, it's like, you know, looking out for me. I love it. So that's the, that has been a huge advantage of having so many clients who are doctors who have become friends because if I have something going on, it can just be like quick send them a text or, you know, give them a phone call and they're like, oh, I'll set you up with my colleague so and so. I'll get you an appointment or it's nice. <laughs> nice to have those connections. Yes, it is. It's not what you know, who you know. But also, I was thinking about the residents coming in match day. When the city was seventy five thousand people, it was it was a much bigger deal than it is now that we're at one hundred and twenty some thousand people. Right. Yep, that's true too. That's true too. So, I mean, there's just other like like I said, the COVID and the people moving and a lot of people that are coming here because they have. You know, there are people our age who have kids who are on staff at Mayo and they want to move here and be closer to their grandkids. So there's a lot of other driving forces besides just match day. But match day is good. You know, we all right. Good. We have to take another break. We'll be back in a moment with Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group Remax Results on News Talk 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. We'll be right back with Robin Gwaltney and Andy Brownell on Rochester Real Estate. This is News Talk 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Welcome back to Robin Gwaltney from Gwaltney Group, Remax Results, and Andy Brownell on Rochester's News Talk 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Good morning. We're with Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group, Remax Results, as we always are on a Saturday morning. So going back to our conversation before the break, I'm going to boil this down. So you say, Robin, that here in the dead of winter, if it's a good time for me, things are happening in my life right now that it makes sense to put my house on the market, that I might as well go and do it, right? Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. And, you know, I I would tell you if, you, if you called me today and said, Robin, we've decided to move. Um, let's get this thing on the market. I would honestly say to you, you know what? We've got some nasty weather. There's no reason to be in a rush, but why don't I come over and take a look at the house, 
see if there is anything that you need to do before we put it on the market. Do we need to get rid of this hutch because it makes the dining room look too small? Or do we need to get rid of, you know, whatever, just kind of sure. walk through with people, tell them what they have to do. Or maybe there's one room where the carpet is just seeing its better day. I might say, you know what, we've got a little bit of time because we are in the dead of winter. So what I would suggest, Andy, is if you get this carpet changed in this room and maybe freshen up the paint in this room and get rid of these three big pieces of furniture, and then let's try to aim for getting it on the market by the middle of February. So I wouldn't necessarily say, oh, my God, this is a rush. we got to have that house on the market today. Let's rush right out there and get it because people, we've been kind of spoiled with the mild temperatures. I don't think with this next week's worth of temperatures that is predicted, too many people are going to go too far from home. That's my guess. Yeah, but, we've been waiting for it for quite a while. Right. So I think that we will act like it's the dead of winter for at least the next week or so. And then I think it'll be like, okay, now our spring market is right around the corner because I have been telling everybody that our spring market used to be When the residents came, used to be match day. That would be like the height of the spring market. I expect this year from all the indications that I have had, I expect the height. I mean, spring market is going to be strong in the middle of February. So I feel like in a month from now, we'll want to have your house on the market if you're ready to do it. Perfect. The snow will be melting by then. Are you ready to do it, Andy? No, I've been here 32 years. <laughs> I'm teasing. I know you're <laughs> moving. I have, yeah. The roots are too deep now. Mm-hmm. Of course, yeah. I also have that dark red wall that I'd have to paint. You would. I had five <laughs> years ago. <laughs> yeah, absolutely would. I I was actually just at a um, listing appointment, and when her daughter, who is, you know, definitely a young adult now, probably, I don't know, in her 30s. When she was in high school, they had hired a painter to come and do this gorgeous full wall Hawaiian mural on the wall. So it's like you're on the beach. Her room is like you're at the beach. Yeah. And they said, what do you think we should do with this? You know, our good friend painted it. We paid a nice price to have it painted. It's still perfect. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that is a tough call. You know, because there are some realtors that would say, paint over it, make it neutral. And part of me just wants to say, leave it. And if the next people want to paint it, let them paint it. But if they have a teenage daughter, they'd probably love it just as much as your teenage daughter did. And maybe because it was freezing cold when I went in and that beach scene looked pretty doggone nice. I don't know. Get some tiki furniture. Exactly. It's like, But you could make that part of the negotiations, right? If they looked at it and they absolutely did not like it, you'd say... Paint it. Yeah. I always tell people if you honestly think that painting or not painting a red wall or painting or not painting over a mural is what's going to make or break your deal, no, 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 no. Paint is more like if I tell people they need paint, it's because I come in and their walls are dirty or their walls are nicked up or the dog has been aggressively scratching, you know, something like that. Sure. So if there's repairs that need to be made or clean up, nobody wants to move into somebody else's destruction or dirt. Nobody. But if it's just a taste thing, like, oh, that's not my color, I might tell you, okay, paint that red wall. And so you paint it cream because you think now it's going to match everything else or beige and the people come in and say, oh, my God, I hate beige. I'm going to paint that. You know, so anyway, I always, I always tell people how important or unimportant it is to do those kind of things. So those are the kind of questions people ask when they have me come ahead of time for a listing. Like they want to prepare themselves so that they can be ready. So when it is time to hit the market, they've done the things that they should do to capture the quickest offer at the best rate. My nightmare would be that. The decision would be made to paint over the beautiful oak in the kitchen. Yeah. And then have the person come in who wanted to buy it and say, oh, it's too bad it doesn't have the oak. I know. And that's (laughs) such a a, um, personal taste thing. 
It is. You know? And some people just love the natural wood and some people just like the painted. So that's why it's good that all houses are different because then there's a little something out there for everybody. Absolutely. Okay, if, well, that's that's really good advice. Yeah, if the cabinets are in good condition, I often tell people just leave the oak and we'll find somebody who likes the oak. And sometimes I say there are quick, easy things you can do, like maybe change the hardware if the hardware is sure. good. You know, and then it spruces it up or take a little um, oil, Murphy's oil soap and and buff them up and shine them up and make them look their best. So, I mean, there are things that I'm always willing to come in and give people advice about what things they don't have to worry about doing and what things they should probably do and what things they most definitely need to do. And the most definitely would be to repair things that are broken. I Absolutely. Or clean things up that are dirty. Clean. So, okay. Yeah. Well, the rest of it we can chat about, whether I need new countertops. Light fixtures. my red walls. Yeah, exactly. And it's always going to depend on, like, where the house is. For instance, um, I was recently at a listing appointment that sits right on the river. And guess what? I'm going to tell them, I don't care if your walls are zebra striped. That's not why somebody's coming right. to this house. You know, they're coming here because of this location. So every single situation is unique. And as an example, um, with my daughter's house in Duluth, it has these windows that are really old. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're talking mid 50s. Okay. But these windows are so fantastic. Yeah. They were talking about replacing these windows. I go, don't you dare replace these windows. You you would have to spend a fortune to replace right. these windows. These It'll are pay incredible. They'll a different heat, but leave Right. Them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're out of time already. I can't believe it. So <laughs> we'll chat again next weekend. All right, Robin? Hopefully in warmer temperatures. Hopefully. Keep our fingers crossed. All right. This has been Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group, REMAX Results right here at News Talk, 1340 KROC AM and 96.9.